Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. On this channel, for many years, I've gone over how many manufacturers try to obscure certain terms of the sale. When it comes to right to repair, you may not know that many of the items that you're purchasing are fundamentally unrepairable in a way that older items were. Even this Sony camera that I'm using to record this video has a website where any man, woman, and child on earth can purchase parts to it and can also find manuals to it, which is not something you see with many modern devices. You don't know that you are locked out of the supply chain necessary to do repairs for many of these devices until you actually buy them. It's not something that's mentioned on the box or in the brochure. And when it comes to many modern devices, you also see companies changing the terms of the sale after the sale. It's not just that they're hiding something pre-sale, it's that they are actually trying to change the terms post-sale. This is something that I went over with Roku recently, where they decided that they were going to go out of their way to send a message to everybody's television, forcing them into forced arbitration. And if you did not click agree to this terms of service, you would not be able to use your television. So you would get a notice that looked something like this. CommunityRoku.com, we've made an important update. We've updated our dispute resolution terms, select agree. You may note that there is no button to disagree, which is actually by design. And if you were to try to hit the button on your remote to switch over to the HDMI input, you, you, you couldn't. You couldn't, you couldn't change inputs. It actually continued to use the television you bought until you agreed to these new terms that were not present when you purchased the product. And this is something that's becoming very, very common nowadays with many companies. It's not just enough to screw you up front, they have to F you afterwards as well. And this is something that Blizzard appears to be taking part in as well. And again, this is a serious problem when you purchase any product or service that requires internet connectivity to work. Anytime you purchase something that requires internet connectivity to work, they can take away features and functionality after the sale, and more importantly, they can change the terms of service anytime they want after the sale. Because as long as your device connects to the internet, to their server, and you can't stop it from doing so, they held you hostage. So let's go over this with Blizzard. This is a very interesting little change in the terms of service with Battle.net that many people are being asked to agree to. So this is from the Blizzard end user license agreement, and I'm just gonna read what a viewer said over here. I guess Blizzard has gone the way of Roku and Sony. They force you to agree to their new terms and conditions, or it just signs you back out of your account. And apparently, it don't own any of the games that you purchased from them and never did. Now, this is, again, this is an interesting one. So they have this new end user license agreement that you can see as of March 21st. And if you you, can, you have agree and cancel, if you cancel, it signs you out of your account. Now, the terms of service here are interesting where it says, if you do not agree to the terms of this agreement, you are not permitted to install copy. And if you take a look at this agreement, it's very interesting because it says, if you do not agree to the terms of this agreement, you are not permitted to install, copy, or use Blizzard platforms or games. So this is an interesting one because, again, this is being sent out to people that already purchased these games prior to these being the terms of sale that need to log on to this platform in order to play their game. If they don't hit agree, then they cannot play their game. So they bought the game when the terms of service were here, under these terms, that's how they gave you the money. And now in order to access what they bought under these terms, they now need to agree to new terms. And it says over here, if you reject the terms of this agreement within 14 days after your purchase of a game from Blizzard, you may contact Blizzard through us.battle.net slash support slash en to inquire about a full refund of the purchase price of that game. If you purchase the game at retail, your right to return the game is subject to the retailer's return policy. So if you bought this game at a store and, uh, you know, the you just you, you can't get a refund on it. So they're able to change the terms of the sale afterwards and you can't do anything about it. You, you bought the game with these terms, you gave them the money under these terms, they can change the ter to these terms at a later point. You see how this is a problem. And I, this is one of these things where it just doesn't seem like they thought this through at all as from the user. And to be clear, there may be a way around this, but the, the user experience of this was obviously not taken into account when putting the, the, this rate B contract. As I do not agree with the EULA, I cannot log into my battle.net account in any way. This creates a few issues that have clearly not been thought out by Blizzard. I cannot log into my account and cancel my service. The only way to cancel my service is to accept the new end user license agreement agreement so I can cancel and remove my payment method. I also cannot see the results of my pending ticket with them as I cannot log in and see the ticket system. As a result, I have deleted my card on my payment platform so they can no longer take my money. I am glad I did not directly give them my card info. And, and just to be, to be clear here, this is a company that I've talked about a lot on this channel. I talked about them in the LA Fitness video and gym cancellations video. To be 100% clear, I have not been sponsored by them. They have never contacted me. I have never asked them for a discount. I have never received a discount on any of their services because up to this point, I actually haven't paid 
speak for them. Uh, this is called privacy.com. What privacy.com allows you to do is you can put a bank account or a debit card down here. And once you have done that, you can create virtual credit cards. So I can have a different credit card for every single merchant that I deal with. So if I'm dealing with a rapey merchant like Blizzard that decides they are just going to change the terms of the sale after I have paid them and not even allow me to cancel unless I accept these new terms, I can simply go to privacy.com and I can change the amount of money that that card is allowed to use, or I can delete it altogether. So when they try to bill me again, they will not be able to bill me again. Privacy.com is a savior for me because there are many websites that have these type of dark patterns. A dark pattern is a pattern where you can technically cancel. Uh, but it's almost as difficult as navigating in New York City taxation or government website, where again, like, you can get the information you want if you have eight hours to spend on the phone and fucking with the website and eight different browsers to figure out how to get where you need to go. Uh, but it, it's like no, nobody cared to make it easy to navigate. And again, why would you? And being able to navigate the website would result in you receiving less penalties because you are more likely to file your returns on time. Uh, this is one of those things where there's really not a motivation or an incentive structure for the company to get it right. If you're canceling, you're not going to give them money anymore, so why do we care about your experience? And maybe if we make it hard, we'll just milk a couple more months out of you. Privacy.com is a great service because, again, at the end of the day, I can have different credit cards across all these different merchants, and when a merchant decides to do some bullshit, I can hit delete. Now, when you look on the Blizzard community forums, one of the things that you'll read is that most people just fundamentally don't care about this. And again, one of the reasons we are where we are, one of the reasons that we have cars that are able to track everything we do and then report it back to General Motors, who reports it to LexisNexis, who reports it to our insurance company, is because people say, why do you care? You, the reason that we have uh, refrigerators that, again, you can't even get a warranty honored on because it says on the side of the box that you're not able to a class action sue them if they do something wrong like I don't know, let's say deny warranty to thousands of users for a defective product because the side of the box says uh, you're not allowed you know you, you can't do that which is a box that you never see because their own delivery men and installers throw it out before you see it the reason that we live in a world where many items are not fixable whether we're talking about wheelchairs or tractors or consumer electronics is because you have people that say eh, it's not a big deal who cares it's one more lost right but who cares and when you just look through this thread, how much of the purges does this affect in terms of being enacted? Uh, you see uh, people saying this is common now. You see the, the, the last one is the one that I found the most interesting here. As if anybody here has the resources to take on Blizzard, just hit accept and play. You earn important or powerful lumps to spend brain cells on this. And at the end of the day, for me, it's not about whether I believe that there is going to be a genuinely uh, in very uh, societally important reason that I personally sue blizzard because i you know i didn't like somebody was mean to me in the chat of the latest warcraft game that's not what it's about it's about this very slow erosion of rights and more importantly the expectation that we deal with it's the expectation that you not be able to use uh, a court of law it's about this slow erosion of rights that happens a hundred thousand little steps at a time it's not any one step that's gigantic it's just here to here to here to here to here to here, to here, to here, to here. Think about how many things would have been considered absolutely insane 30 years ago that we just accept as normal right now. The inability to install an operating system of your choice on a $1,000 computer you own. The inability to fix the things that you own. The, in the, the, the idea that your car has the ability to report information to the insurance company so that if they think you accelerated too fast on one occasion, your insurance premiums go up $100 a month without your consent. Google having the ability to go through everything that you send to their platform, scan it, have people look at it, and then report it to the police because you took a picture of your child for a doctor during a time period when you were not able to go there physically. And again, there are so many things where people will simply say, you know, like, what are you afraid of? You have nothing to hide. Trust me, they're not spying on you. You're not going to sue police. Like, at the end of the day, there's just one after another, after another, after another. And like 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, when companies are able to do whatever they want to us, when we have no privacy anymore, when we have no sovereignty over what we own, we don't own what we own, everybody's going to say, man, when did it happen? And you won't be able to point to any individual instance because there wasn't any individual instance that was at fault. Rather, it was a slow march towards just not owning anything, not having any consumer rights, and not having any freedom. And that's a sad thing. And again, when you look at this, your use of the platform is licensed, not sold to you. And you hereby acknowledge that no title or ownership with respect to the platform and the games is being transferred or assigned. And this agreement should not be construed as any sale of rights.
nothing that you have purchased from this company is actually yours. Nothing that you've purchased from many other companies has been yours for a long time. Even if I were to purchase a camera from a different brand than this and anything were to go wrong with that camera, it, can I get a schematic? Can I buy parts easily to it? No. The reason that I got this thing, even though Sony sucks in a lot of other ways, is that 13 years after the purchase of this camera, I could go to their website and again, oh, the price is perfect. It's 35 bucks for an HDMI port, but I can buy it and I can see a nice little detailed 97 page manual that tells me how I can service it so that if anything happens to it, I can have some feeling of ownership over it. That feeling of ownership is something that's being taken away more and more every single day. Uh, you bought something, you bought it under one set of terms, and now they can just change it and take away what you'd purchased if you don't agree to it. 10 or 15 years ago, we would have thought this is crazy. And now it's just like, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. The majority of people are just going to look at that and say, okay, whatever. And again, it's not going to be until they drive their Chevy Bolt and there's one time where somebody stops in front of them a little too hard. So they, uh, you know, because they're playing with their phone or some bullshit. So I now have to hit the brakes a little harder than usual. And I actually prevent a crash, but now my insurance premiums went up $100 because my car is spying on me. Like that's the point at which people are going to care. They only care when it personally affects them. And the thing that I fear above all else is that it, people are not going to notice that it affects them un until it's too late and so you can't really reverse it you can't change course you can't stop uh, and uh it's kind of depressing anyway let me know what you think that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something uh two things i would like to shill here and be you feel free to turn off the video at this point because at this point this is just an ad and uh, i do not like ads so i like to give you a uh, time to just go into your pocket hit the off button on uh, power button in your phone pause in your tv remote or anything before you hear it all right, so that should have been enough time for you to end it. Uh, this here is an Atten Hot Air Rework Station. We have these back in stock, same day shipping, and we also have them on sale. If you know anybody who's purchased these for me, who's ever had a problem with them, hopefully uh, you know they've, they've let you know that if you do have a problem with this, even a little bit outside of warranty, we are usually very generous in terms of, of, of dealing with that, although we haven't had as many warranty issues with these as we've had with other brands of products. This is a pretty nice little hot air station. And we also have this, and uh, this is a, a Mr. Clinton the Cat, uh, battery pack so you can use this for uh, charging up your phone your bluetooth headphones anything like that it's a little usb power bank yeah this is a uh, $28.71 and it has a little engraving on it i don't know if it's engraving or a uh, laser or whatever the hell they did of mr clinton the cat so if you are a fan of clinton the cat we have that and i will link these two things down below and that's it for today and as always hope you learned something see you on the next video bye now